Hey everyone, Sakri Yasin here, and today I'm joined by my good friend and illustrator, Marius Bota. Uh, hey guys, and hey Sakra, thanks for having me today. Uh, it's my pleasure. So, what I wanted to do is just go over a little bit about your journey, and, you know, how you got into art, and what it took to get to where you are now, and then maybe a little bit about where you want to go in the future. So, starting in the beginning, um, how did you first get into art? When did you do your first drawing? Do you remember? Uh, yes, I actually remember this uh, pretty clearly. clearly. Uh, it all happened when I was uh, around five years old. Uh, I never went to, uh, to kindergarten by then, uh, until then. Uh, and I was in my and my uh, grandma's, and uh, I have a cousin there, and she went to kindergarten. And my mom asked me, "Hey, you should go with her at the kindergarten." And then you know, I went there, and then they uh, made us draw something, and I did. And I remember how I, for some reason, I managed to impress the kids and the teacher there. So um, that was like probably the time when I realized that. You know, that's a really nice feeling. You know, maybe I should do this. Uh, so that's pretty much how it started. And then, you know, it kind of evolved in from fifth to eighth grade. Wow. So right when you're five years old, you already impress people with your art. Well, I, I guess impress is like a big word, but I know they liked it. So, I mean, I just liked the, the, the reaction of people when they saw what I could do at five years old. I, I don't think it was that big, you know, that big of a deal. I mean, it was a, a house a drawn in like a 3D, you know, like a cube in 3D, for, uh, you know, in space. Well, kind of, of course. You, you know, it, was, it wasn't really that good, but so it was a house and, and a pencil, and then I put some color on them with, with color pencil, and, and, and that was it. But I don't know, people just liked it, I guess. Hmm. All right, so then after that, were you always drawing um, or, you know, just all the time or was it just something casually that you would do? It was it was for the most part casually. Um, I don't really remember being all that much into it uh, in like from first to fourth grade, but I know it became a, a huge part of why was it from fifth to eight? Because I, I used to like copy Pokemons from small stickers and you know to you know translate them to bigger uh, papers and and uh, you know all that stuff. And I used to do like the paintings of other people and you know for their for the painting class and all that stuff. So yeah, it it, it kind of evolved, you know, uh, slowly. And then in eighth grade, I had to decide, okay, do I want to go forward? And and I did. Uh, went into high school, did sculpture, uh, uh, painting, and uh, you know traditional pencil drawing, I know graphics, I don't know how to call it. Uh, and then you know did a bit of college as well in sculpture, and then I you know I guess I quit. It wasn't really for me. I guess I, I maybe I stepped too too much into the time frame but yeah that's that's how it was pretty much my my whole thing so did you attend a, a specific type of art school or is this just a normal high school and it's it's just a normal high school you know with normal classes and you know it just it was more focused on arts you, know, you have had music and theater and you know drama and all that so i went there and i as i said i did a uh, sculpture painting and you know the the traditional pencil drawing uh so did that for four years and as i said you know i went to college after that and uh did sculpture there for for one year and a half after you know after and I, after one year and a half i realized that it's not really what i want to do because they never really let me uh develop in the area that i wanted and uh, even though i showed them what i want to do they just gave me promises and that was it so you know do you want to talk it. a bit about more about that like uh what what kind of promises did they give uh well they they so at the end of uh, the first year in college they asked us okay you should we want to see your personal stuff 
your personal, uh, you know, things, everything that you do, you know, besides school. And I did. I was really heavily interested in into character design at that time. And I had like a lot of a lot, like a lot of sketches with characters, and, you know, on, on paper. Because I wasn't really that uh, interested in digit. I mean, I I already had a tablet at that point, but I I never really had time. Well, actually, I could have had time, but I don't know what happened. I was lazy. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I had I showed them the drawings and I said, "Oh, we see where you want to go, and uh, we're gonna let you develop on this uh, path, and you know, from from next year." And uh, you know, of course it. It didn't really happen. It, every time, because because like every uh, the, all the subjects that we had to do on sculpture were like, okay, do this, uh, and I was always the only one to ask, can I do you know anatomy related? I mean, can I interpret this subject in a you know an anatomical way? Because it was really that's what interests me. You know, doing abstract uh, art wouldn't really help my cause. And they knew that, but still they did. Even after, you know, making the promises, they didn't let me do that. So, you know, I, I went for six months with that. And, and then I decided, you know, it's it's not what I want. And uh, uh, I decided to just leave. I said, you know, this is not good for me. I'm just going to leave. I'm going to go home and uh, study on my own because I think it's, you know, good. If other people can do it, why can I not do it? So I went home and that was it left a lot of people really disappointed and sad behind but you know you have to do what you think it's right for you and all right so okay and uh for people who don't know you're from uh romania right yes yes okay, west so, romania so you had this idea of you went to school and you took sculpture and it was mostly abstract and you wanted to do uh, realism but how did you know uh, for instance, that people people were doing this uh, who were just self-taught. Uh, how did you find about out about that stuff? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the first contact uh, I had with this was in uh, probably 2006, way before college, actually. And I was still in high school, like 2006, maybe 2007, when I got my tablet and I found out about concept art. So there... Like for out of all people, you know, Marco stood out probably because Marco Djurjevic uh, stood up probably because of his his character at that point. You know, he had the apocalyptic thing uh, going on. I never really got interested in in Marvel that much. His Marvel stuff. It's I I never I I didn't really grow with Marvel characters in Romania. So you know, I was I really liked his post-apocalyptic stuff. And then and then my uh, when when I got the tablet, my cousin also sent me the DVD from him, and uh, I saw and I, I saw that he self-taught uh, in there, and I was like, hmm, and that's interesting. So that was the first contact, and then in uh, right before I quit college, when I decided to quit college, I found out about uh, Queens and Daggers, which you know it's funded by uh, by Dave Raposa. And and that also showed, oh hey, look, you know, this guy doesn't have a degree in art. You know, you don't really need it if you if you put the muscle and work in, you can, you know, um, you can you can get there. And he wasn't the only one. There were like a lot of other, you know, people doing the same thing with him, you know, in the group. So those were like the probably the biggest things that really pushed me to do this. You know, Dave and, and Marco. So you know, big thanks to to them. Like I, I guess I guess you know the daggers were were probably like fifty percent of of the you know reason why I left college because I just you know it, it, there was you know out of the blue a group that actually helped you get better and didn't ask you for money you know like didn't uh, say oh you should do this you know he said hey you. you you should do this, but you remember, you know, it. It's not. It, it this doesn't really. It's not really uh, uh, sure that it will work for you. You know, everyone has its own method. So I really, I really like that. So, you know, that really helped me to to quit college and move on and just become self-taught from that point. 
So was it scary for you to just leave art school or, or college in this case and, uh, and just start? Or how, how was it for you in terms of the transition? Mm, I don't, it wasn't really scary. I, I wasn't scared. Uh, because I, I, I was so disgusted with, with college that, you know, this really seemed... Uh, probably I wasn't really uh, thinking wisely as well but i knew one thing i knew it, and that was that you don't need a paper to to tell you to give you a job papers don't give you jobs you know your skills give you jobs especially in art in other you know in other uh, uh fields okay you know if you want to be a doctor of course you need a degree but you also of course need to know how to do your stuff but in art, it's all about what you want to do. And, and the industry has moved on and it's not, you know, back in the day, it was about, oh, do you have a degree? If you had a degree, you, are, you had like a uh, easier time to get in, but not anymore. Apparently, you know, it's now it's all about, hey, can you do the, the task that I'm assigning, uh, you know, that I will assign to you? That's all it comes down to. So, oh, as I said, you know, I wasn't really, really scared. Uh, my my parents were like my friends were my teachers were they it's and it was mostly because it's not like oh you you won't be able to get a job no it wasn't that it was it was mostly they didn't they didn't think that I would be able to stay motivated at home and do you know do the study and and you know, to get better, they they thought, oh, you're just gonna stay home and not do anything with your life. And I I see, you know, where they're coming from. I I understand that, and you know, it's okay. I wish I had, you know, maybe a little bit more support. I didn't really have any support besides, the, you know, the daggers. But it's okay, you know. It's it's. I'm I'm happy that I you know managed to do it regardless. Okay, so. How did you motivate yourself then? Because you're right. I mean, you're you're all alone and you're in a room and no one's telling you, "Hey, you got to start working now. You got to start studying now." Oh, well, <laughs> this is a, a, a interesting question because I I wasn't always like painting like that. like i've i've never been a hard worker even if after i quit like uh, to be honest i okay i had i ha i always had have periods or at least had in the past now i pretty much work all the time but i always had periods when you know i would work very very intense for like a month or two and then you know kind of cool off you know like uh, as in work as in you know study and then cool off and only do jobs and not do anything so that was like my 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 thing for about two years like at least until the one year ago exactly one year ago in in october or something like that it was pretty much october october that was my my thing i, I would study for uh, for a month or two then cool off and just do jobs and not do anything personal you know personal stuff and whatnot and then you know again you know study a bit and and so on so there was this rotation it was really hard to be actually motivated uh it was it was easy at first because it was the daggers but then you know with all like all, with all the things you know you have that big wave of people that come in and they're very excited but once the main guy disappears because you know he's busy you know i'm referring to dave it's normal that it would it will tone down and then last year at around this time, you know, in October, he came back, and there was like again this big huge of people coming in again, which which for, for now it seems that it kind of stabilized and they're still doing it. Of of course, you know, it it toned down during the summer. It, it seems like at least that's how I see it, but it, it is still you know better. And then I you know when when he came back, I found you know that 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 impulse again and I found this new information and I moved from character design to illustration more and I started developing my portfolio like that. So yeah, it was, it was hard and it, and it's still hard sometimes, you know, to, to be motivated and to work from home and, you know, because there's so many distractions and, you know, but you have to, you have to do it. Sometimes it's just, 
you, you can't stop. You just have to because you have to pay bills or, you know, you, you need to make money. So, right. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned studying a few times now. Um, what what do you mean by when you say, well, I was studying? What what were you studying? Uh, well, I I mostly studied, uh, you know, B uh, Bamis. Uh, he's a uh, He's a guy that does uh, anatomy, so I mostly studied him uh, for anatomy and structure, and then and then I studied from pictures, like painting from from pictures, um, and that was like for the for the first three years or something until until like maybe until like March or April this year. That was like what I did. And and then I I noticed uh, that my my thought changed uh, on on studies a bit uh, after after having a discussion with a, a high school teacher of mine, which we are still friends. Uh, he said, you know, it's not you don't always have to, you know, study. I mean, you should take breaks. It's not really good. You need to exercise your, you know, put your mind to work. You know, it's not always oh do a study and then. Uh, apply it it's it's a good method but you need i feel like now i feel like you need to get that time only you and your brain to to put something on the paper without looking at anything so i started doing that i i took a break and i haven't studied since then since april or something like that um you know i guess i should feel ashamed about that but i, I haven't studied but what i did and i guess uh, we talked about the cycle before. I guess you want to know about this. I don't know. Should I jump into the observation thing or? Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so what I started doing was just observing things, uh, and I found that it's a really good way to to uh, to learn uh, because I know I have a theory that we all know how how objects look. We, we all know how shadows work. We all know everything pretty much. But it's all about be, becoming conscious of, of, the, of the things around us. It's all about, oh, look, just look at something and see how it works and, and make sure it sticks into your mind. And that's what I've been trying to, I mean, what I've, of what I've uh, been doing for months now. Just whenever I, I go out or, or just sit in a room and don't do anything, I just look at things and see how, you know, light reacts and all that stuff. And that's pretty much how I, how I evolved in the past months, uh, you know, without studies. And I know for me, it really works. Again, you know, it may not work for everyone, but for me, it really, I think it worked. And, um, and of, of course, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll open a reference if I really need to, if I don't know how it looks. But again, I'll just observe a bit. I cl I'll close it and I'll try to, you know, make my mind work and make my mind think and, and figure out. Because I, I feel like that's more important. And in the in the long run, it will it really helps you more to have everything in your mind and not rely on, on, on pictures that much. It's not bad, you know. A lot of people do it, and uh, you know, it's it's good. It's just how the, you know the way I think. It, it this, as I said, this may not work for most of the people, but it works for me. So you know, I just wanted to pretty much share it with you guys. And yeah, so for people who don't know, um, a pretty common method for artists who are working, especially illustrators, is uh, to open up reference and to do studies. So, for instance, if you're gonna if you're going to paint an image and there's a turtle monster, maybe you might do uh, some paintings of turtles to begin with and, you know, get that in your head and or or you'll have pictures open of, of turtles and whatnot while you're working on your image. Um, so what Marius is, is what you're saying is that basically you don't do that. You just. <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped. I I am stubborn. I, I stopped and I always have discussions with friends and, and, and stuff when I don't know something. Uh, you know, every time, you know, someone says, just use a reference. And I'm like, hmm, yeah, well, I, I'll use it if I just can't get there. But I'll tr first try to get there. And if I can, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll open an email, I'll find Google the image and, 
and look at it for a bit and close it and, and you know then go from then on but uh, it's it's very rarely that I need to open one uh, it's again you know my stuff is not really super realistic uh, I guess it's close to being realistic but it's not like oh my god this is like looks like a photo no it's not it's not I don't I don't even want to go there really because because then what's the difference right it's in it it needs to be a painting not a photo if I want a photo I'll just go and take a photo or you know do colleges or I don't know how you call those um, but yeah it's no I don't know it's it's how I I like to work right now and uh, I I you know don't don't you know take my word for it you know you can try it but you know, understand that it, it may not work for you or you know for a lot of people but I know it really works for me I feel so uh, so yeah. was this something that uh, you uh, got better at did you practice this kind of visualizing thing or just looking at things or is it something you've always kind of been naturally good at for uh, I don't know I I don't remember being like this I I remember like uh, I always liked to to not just as I say to not just look at things but really look at things as in you don't you don't just glance over things when you're out or you're walking down down the street in in downtown or I always like to look at people and and observe you know small things like you you just go behind a person you see his jacket he moves and you see the the wrinkles how they move according to his steps and you know i always did that and now it just became more intense because now i'm always doing that now i'm always looking at how how things react to each other and and i think we we actually i I told you about this Uh, there was um a few weeks ago i was waiting for someone uh and and I saw this a uh, homeless guy uh, sitting down. Uh, he was really like busted. I don't know. He was looking really bad. Uh, but he had a really interesting complexion on the skin. Like his uh, his uh, joints on his knee area areas and and ankles uh, were were he was black. Like he was a gypsy. He was black. Uh, you know, black skin tone. But this the area around his knees were white. It was like he looked like he was a zombie or something. So there I was waiting for my friend to come, and I was staring at the guy for like probably around 15 minutes, just like staring at him because th- that's what I do. I maybe it's a bit. I know I was a, a bit afraid that he <laughs> will walk up to me and punch me in the face. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I do when I find something interesting. I just look at it until I'm I'm sure. Okay. Now it's in my head. I know if I want to paint a zombie from now on, I have this, you know, thing, you know, the skin complexity that I can use for my drawings and, you know, give it this, this like really morbid feel and whatnot. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much my process. I just am a creeper. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a <start>. pretty, <laughs> pretty <laughs> awesome story. Um, so... Okay, so I'm just trying to follow the timeline now. Okay, so you left college, and then you stumbled upon conceptart.org and saw the work of Marco Djurjevic, and then you discovered Dave Raposa and his Crimson Daggers. Um, Now, how long was it between you just start studying with this group and you're self-taught and you're looking at um, Bombus Anatomy and all that before you got to, uh, let's say, your first job? Well, my first job was actually right before I left college. I had I or I immediately started working because so I left college in uh, college like the second semester. Actually, no, it was still first semester, but it was uh, uh, about to end in February. So I went after New Year's Eve, you know, up after you know having New Year's and whatever. Uh, it was the third of January. I went there and asked, "Okay, can I freeze my year and think about it? Maybe I want to come back." And he, they were like, "No, you can't, cause, uh, cause uh, you need to, um, you need to be ill or something in order to do that." And I was like, "Oh, well, other people can do it. Why can't I?" Well, you know, it's always uh, something special about other people, I guess. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to quit. Just give me my papers and I'm out. And 
they they were a bit bummed and whatnot, and I quit. And anyway, that's not the point. So so in after that, I immediately came home and started working on my portfolio. I had like three four pieces, and I put them on on the forums. And then I immediately got my job around probably like beginning of February. That was like my first job. I had to do uh, 10 characters for very little money. and But it was nice. It was, I always treated those, you know, beginner jobs as, as, um, as a way to learn. Because I was really, really bad. I didn't know how to do anything, so for me, the ex- I could use the exercise. Uh, and after that, in March, I I got into a seven-month project that I worked for free for a game. Uh, so yeah, I did everything that I could to to get better. You know, people say now say, oh, you should not work for free no matter what. I don't know if I agree with that. I think you know if you're starting out and you have the time and you you're working on your personal stuff why not just you know help someone with something it even if you don't get anything out of it if if it, even if it it's all promises but it never turns you know uh, to anything just i feel it's not why not why not because you are going to be in a somewhat professional environment and it will teach you about certain things i was really lucky cuz in the in the for the company that I worked for, uh, you know, the indie company, they were really professional and, and it really taught me a lot about, you know, everything that is to know about the industry and the pipelines and all that. So, yeah, that was pretty much it. I got carried away there. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's, that's great. So, um, so from there, did it just, uh, snowball or how did you move from, from one job to the next? Um, I never really looked for jobs. I just did my personal paintings and I, I put everything, anything that I could into my portfolio and I waited. I, I wasn't in a situation when I, where I needed money. So I only focused on, you know, getting better. And if I had jobs, you know, okay, I'll do the jobs. And that's how it was for pretty much the entire, entire time until like one year ago or something like that it was you know i i never really because because i i just i was conscious i i wanted to just get better i didn't feel like there is any need to rush because there's it, there wasn't any need to rush my parents will would would have glad me kept me uh, you know kept me uh, at home to study they understood you know that it has to be done and I'm really grateful for them for being so supportive um, so you know just this year I, I've I've started working intensively on my portfolio and being active and and you know be trying to find jobs and but still I haven't really applied to many companies yet they they always I'm, I'm really lucky that you know for the most part they always uh, contact me so you know I guess if you're, you know, if you really put a lot of uh, stuff up there, you know, it's inevitable. It's just a matter of time that you you will get noticed eventually. Just, you know, keep at it, you know, keep adding new stuff to your portfolio and it it will happen eventually. It may take a bit more time uh, if you're like me and you don't socialize as much. It may take a bit more time, but it will come. It will come, you know. So, um, did you find it was harder uh, being in Romania to find work, or I guess not, because people contacted you? Uh, yeah, no. It, the thing was, I never actually I never worked with a Romanian client ever. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how that is. I never really considered Romania I never put Romania on the list of clients like I didn't even cared about Romania I never really wanted to have clients from Romania because I know they would pay really 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 bad and they would ask a lot because you know that's you know that's how the currency is here but uh, yeah no it was I don't know I always had like clients from outside and the few occasions from that I got uh Offers from Romania didn't turn into anything. They were just promises. So, uh, 
uh, yeah. So I guess it really doesn't matter where you are in the world now. You could just yeah, as long as long as you have the internet, you yeah. I I I think it's really stupid to just look into your in your country for work. I think that's why would you do that when you have the internet? It's it doesn't make any sense. So just don't do it. Just put your make sure your portfolio is everywhere, so you increase your chances of people you know finding you. So I wanted to cover how many hours you would spend drawing, uh, maybe when you started and now uh, drawing or painting. Like how 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 much time in your day does this? Um, it 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 really depends depends on how much work I have or like back in you know back right after I quit college it wasn't really that much it was. It came probably like I don't think it was more than eight hours a day. I I I would mostly do my studies, try to apply it somehow, and then just be bored. <laughs> uh, eight hours is as, quite a bit for. Yeah, yeah as I said, I wasn't really the most motivated guy. I just did things my at my own pace, and I, I, I if I felt like doing a lot, I would do a lot. If I, you know, so I never really had the the, the real schedule, because that's you know one of the small reasons why I I meant you know I like this you know being a freelancer, because you do what you want with your time as long as you can get there and you know you can meet the deadline. No one cares how much and how you organize your time. You know, you can work this day. I can work nothing. You know, I cannot even lift a finger. And the next day, I'll, okay, I'll have to put 16 hours in. But, you know, as long as I meet my deadline, it's okay. Uh, now, recently, like this year, you know, it became more, I, I started working a lot more on a daily basis. And I had a few periods when I couldn't work for different reasons. But, uh, for the most part, especially now, I I I, I get close to a twelve hour a day. Uh, I had like re- like last week. I had like uh, uh, hour uh, days with sixteen hours. Uh, so yeah, a lot of work. Uh, yeah, when when I have a lot of work, I I do I put the time because I want to keep. I always like to keep my clients happy. And I'm not I'm not gonna put a pencil down until I know they're happy. So uh if they say it's okay no you know sometimes i'm not really satisfied so i'll say okay you can do what you want you can send me the money but i'll still want to work a bit more on it just so i i feel i feel that it's you know better than okay so yeah so those days that are the 16 hour days um pretty much you're just in front of a computer screen uh right so how do you get through that how do you balance uh, life and uh, your yeah. art job. You don't. <laughs> I don't think you do. I, I don't think you can balance a, a, a social life. I, can, I don't think it, the social life goes into that. Especially in my case, like okay, if I would have a, let's say a wife or or a fiance or a girlfriend, you know, staying with me, okay, you can, you can talk with her, and you know you can do that. But when you don't, uh. You just work and, uh, you know, you, you enjoy your small coffee or lunch break or dinner break and then you go back to work. But it's not always the case. Like, I don't expect that I'm really doing this, like, 24-7, so, you know. It's, no, I, I do, I do, I do have my, my, my relaxing time and i actually against working too much. It only happens, as I said, it only happens when, when I have a lot of work and, um, you know, when I have like, I don't know, well, I guess when I have a lot of work and that's, that's pretty much it. It only happens then, but I always try not to get too much because life, it's not only about work. It's, it's about, you know, your, you know, a lot of other things and a lot of other things are more important than work. Um, so, you know, I try and try and find find as much time for that as I can uh, so I you know I, w- I won't have to like spend most of the time uh, you know doing jobs and stuff I, I don't go out as much as I would love to I recently started to 
but I used to be I used to like not go out for for weeks. <laughs> so yeah, it's now now I st- actually actually started going out more and talking with people more, all that stuff, which is you know it's better. It just feels better, cause cause being in the house is not always the best thing. It it really can change you as a person, and when you finally get out, it becomes a, a nightmare. It, it just you just don't feel comfortable and I'm not sure how many people want want that, you know, not to feel comfortable when they go out. So try and try and balancing it, balance everything out. Cause I think it's really, really important. Remember that it's not only about work. It's, there are so many other things that are more important than, than, you know, work and money. And all right. Well, I think that's it for uh, this little interview. So thanks so much, uh, Marius for joining us. And, uh, could you let people know how they could uh, see your work? Uh, do you have a website or something? Oh uh, yeah, I have a website that's on the works. Uh, it's uh, marisbota dot com. Uh, uh, it's not finished yet. It will probably be finished pretty soon. If not, I think the uh, you, the best way to find me is probably on Facebook. I know you know. It, it, Maybe some people say, you know, for Facebook, but it's really like the one of the best things for an artist. It's like the best way to keep in touch with people and share stuff. So my it's either my personal page on Facebook, which is, uh, you see, Maris Bota Art, or just friend me there, or I know my blog spot, which is Maris Bota at blog spots. So that's pretty much how you can find me. It's really easy, just Google. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you again. And uh, I'm sure people really enjoyed hearing uh, your story. I, I hope they did. And thanks, thanks uh, for having me. It was really nice. Yeah, it was my pleasure. <laughs>